Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and this is part two of the Yale burglar alarm project. Uh, part one I'll link down below and we've made some progress on the modifications to the burglar alarm uh, outlined in part one. So let's get down onto the workbench and I'll show you what I've done. So this is my development panel here. I did actually buy a couple off of eBay. This is the the older uh, one. It's got a, an older rev of PCBs and circuitry on the back and it's slightly more used looking. So I thought I'd use this one for a kickoff for development. The other one's uh, in pretty good condition. I'm gonna save that one for my production hardware as, it, as I would call it uh, for the house. So um, before I actually let you have a look at the back of it. I'm actually going to demo it since I've got it sitting up at the moment. There was two aspects I was looking to get working with the panel and that was number one Wi-Fi connectivity and the other one was GSM connectivity. Wi-Fi or slash Ethernet connectivity uh, I don't actually have it running now. I did have it running but I've actually taken it down and I've concentrated fully on the GSM aspect. Uh, more about why I've done that uh, once we get into the back but for the time being like I said I've got full GSM connectivity so therefore it can text my phone and relay information back and forwards. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually show you it up and running here. I'll, I'll text the alarm, you'll see the alarm react and then you'll see text coming back to the phone as well. So on the phone itself I've written a command sequence that I can send to the unit. Uh, and I've also built in a bit of security as well um, that it will only react to uh, text messages from my phone, i.e. it looks at the number that's, that sent the message and it will only react to my phone there. So as you can see in my phone, I've actually been doing a quite a bit of testing obviously. So I'll just send a, a command sequence here, E and J colon alarm off. So I'll just hit send on the phone, off it goes and it'll take a few seconds and you should see the panel react. There we go. So what you saw there was the text messages message instructed the panel to turn the alarm off. To do that, basically what you have to do is press this green button here and then the pin number on the panel and then that will turn the alarm off. Um, so the interface I've built in the back, what it did is it simulated pressing the green button and then obviously simulated the, 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 the pin number there and that turned the alarm off. So let's try turning the alarm on remotely now. So another command sequence here, E and J colon alarm house on. And what that's going to do, that's going to instruct the alarm to press the red button and that will turn on the alarm. So let's go press send and we'll wait for it to react. And there we go. It's now counting down, giving you your 60 second time to exit the house. So I'll just uh, get clear that message actually. Okay, it's alarm back off again. The next thing I wanted to do was try and get a status update from the panel back to the phone. So I do actually have another message that I can send to the panel and that is E and J colon alarm status. And that will pick up some parameters in the alarm and send it back to the phone. So let's go with that one there. There we go. Alarm status requested. That's a response from the panel. The fault LED is on. Is the first message come through? The siren is off. Obviously, you can't hear it, and that's it. Of course, I'm picking up both of those uh, via digital inputs on the Arduino board inside the panel. Uh, the siren signal and also the fault LED here, as you can see, it's on, as per the message I got back there. 
So of course there is going to be some text messages that originate from the panel itself, i.e. when there is an intruder uh, on the house via one of the PIR sensors and the siren goes off, the Arduino is going to see that and it's going to instruct the GSM module to send a text to my phone uh, and it'll say the house alarm is sounding. and. Obviously from there I can do something about that or indeed I can send a message back to the panel if it's a false alarm uh, to tell it to turn off the alarm. So I think the next thing we'll do is we'll take a look at the back of the panel and show you how I've managed to get the hardware installed in the back. Okay before I show you the panel that I have modified this is the other panel and it's basically in its uh, original state. As you can see, you've got the microcontroller there, the TX and RX modules there, and there's, you know it's pretty sparse. There's not a lot to it there. Um, one thing I have done on uh, both of these uh, panels is remove the telephone-related hardware there, and that was to give me a bit of space to put my own boards there. So here it is jam-packed with PCBs and all sorts of wire in there. So I'll just zoom in a bit so you can have a look. So what we've got here, um, starting at the top there, there's my um, Arduino there, my Atmel 328P um, with the IO extender board and as you can see there's some uh, bodge wires or quite a few of them over at the left hand side there. I actually dropped the MOSFETs in favour of some analogue switches. Um, I just found the MOSFETs too unreliable due to the way that the um, microcontroller on the Yale panel was actually scanning the keyboard key keypad matrix and it was causing a little bit of glitching and overlap on the MOSFETs and they just weren't reliable. Sometimes I'd press a button in the front I would get the command through, sometimes I wouldn't. So I changed over to analog switches so that I could control them uh, a lot better and it's 100% uh, reliable now. Um, so that's the Arduino board there. The next board down here, this is the uh, Ethernet module here and as you can see I've actually removed the RJ45 and I've mounted it down at the side there um, so that the cable can exit the panel. At the moment I've pulled the power from that there, the 5 volts is pulled, uh, it's powered off at the moment uh, and I'll go into the, exactly the reasons behind that in, in a little while. The next board down, this is the GSM module and as you can see it's up and running, it's powered up there. The SIM card's on the underside. The only other thing that I've done is I've actually removed the, here's the 5 volt regulator for the actual panel itself. It takes 9 volts in via the DC connector here and uh, drops it down to 5 volts for power and everything on the board. Now because my hardware here um, draws maybe 70 uh, you know milliamps 70 80 milliamps it puts a slightly more load on the original 5 volt regulator uh, nothing close to its limit mind you it's still less than 200 milliamps um, but due to the 4 volt drop across the regulator and that little bit of extra loading it was getting a little bit warm on the regulator itself. Not hot, just warm. However, because the enclosure's, you know, uh, quite compact and there's not a lot of free air inside the unit, especially with all my extra wiring and hardware, I decided to change the 5 volt regulator for a DC to DC converter here. Um, it's almost, it's basically pin compatible with the uh, original 5 volt regulator and of course that's a switcher so it's basically stone cold and the uh, inside of the panel is uh, a lot lot cooler uh, there. Um, because it's going to be on 24-7 I wanted to give it the best shot possible. So it does look like you know there's a lot of hardware there, but you know the 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 cover actually it it does go on. And the only thing I needed to had to do was hack a little bit here at the plastic here just to reveal the RJ45. There wasn't there was just 
not quite enough room there for the cable to exit there so I just widened the existing hole here which this is where the telephone socket the RG11 used to go so I just had to widen that very slightly just to allow the RG45 to exit there and that uh, gives me you know, a, a good reveal of the cable there but yeah like I said there's uh, not a lot of room inside the uh, in the, you know the housing um, it's everything on the back here is almost jam-packed up against the back there um, so what I have gone ahead and done as well is the header that I've got on the my PCB for programming the uh, Arduino I've actually um, put a little cut out here so when that's on the back there I can still uh, plug in my serial cable into the back there so we've also got the antenna, I didn't mention that, this is the antenna here that I showed you earlier which has just uh, got the adhesive back in so it's on the back of the sound, sounder there, there's enough room at the back there, uh, you know it's not going to interfere with that much at all and of course this area round here is actually for the battery um, which is quite tight in this corner here so I couldn't put any hardware at all there there's only a couple of these small wires there that I've put in that go into the back of the PCB to bring some signals out up onto the front here um, the wiring I've chosen the smallest possible uh, within reason so this is 701 7 by 0.1 millimeter you know hookup cable there so that's fine it's flexible enough and it's going to be long lasting enough during development uh, moving the boards around and that sort of thing and you can actually if you, you know you, you group it together you can actually run quite a lot of wires in it in a quite a tight uh, diameter there so you can get down uh, between the transformer and this, this transistor here and the wiring can be actually pushed down between the components on the board which is what I've done I don't know if you can see it in the video I've kind of done that along here from the RJ45 all the way along there the wiring is actually almost at PCB level here uh, and up around here uh, the same idea, it's actually below the level of this uh, electrolytic capacitor that's on its side here, the wiring's down on the side there. Um, the header for the uh, serial programming for the Arduino, I've actually had to cut that down slightly, just a little bit, it's enough that I can still get contact with my single in line header that I plug into it, but the pins are a little bit shorter uh, than the you know the standard there. And of course when I was modifying the board here, I used surface mount uh, analog switches there, glued to the top of the board there, upside down on the top of the board there, and then I've just soldered directly onto the pins and interfaced it to the to the uh, I.O. extender there. But that's probably the biggest modification I've had to make. Um, I'm actually going to spin another board uh, with the, the analog switches, uh, you know, properly tracked on a new PCB, and that will go in the actual house uh, unit when I modify that. Uh, again, this is just my development one. So I'm actually quite happy with the work I've done to date. The GSM module seems to be working very reliably. I did want to get the web interface working because um, I wasn't too keen on actually using, the, you know, the uh, text messages on the phone to interact with the alarm but having worked with that and got it up and running and I actually find it to, to really easy to use as long as you remember the commands to send to the uh, panel it's actually quite good you know you send a text to the phone you get an immediate response within a few seconds confirming you know the command that you've sent and it's actually you know for, it's going to give me the widest coverage as well. Um, you know, you're not always going to be next to uh, be in an area where there is Wi-Fi uh, that I could interact with the the, the panel. But um, texting is a different story. You know, you're always really going to have uh, GSM uh, availability, no matter where you are in the country, sort of thing. So I'm actually quite happy with that. So whether I go to the trouble to finish off and get the Ethernet module up and running. Uh, you know, like I said, play around with the memory usage on the Arduino. I don't really know. Um, the person inside me that doesn't like to leave an unfinished job. Uh, so, you know, maybe I will, maybe I won't. So I might play around a little bit and if I get, a, you know, an idea that it's going to work, I'm going to be able to reduce the, the memory footprint, then I might carry on and do that. Um, 
we'll wait and see. Uh, the other thing that I was looking to do, and I think I mentioned this in the YouTube comment from, I think Steve Gardner brought it up, and that was the possibility of interfacing to the actual LCD on the front and bringing this information here into the Arduino. Well, the hardware to be able to do that is actually built into the board here. I do actually have it uh, all cabled up uh, to do that. Um, but to tell you the truth, I couldn't get it working. Um, you know, uh, it's an 8-bit interface that drives the LCD. It's a standard uh, interface and uh, used some direct port uh, manipulation there. It's the fastest code that I could get going in order to try and pick up the 8-bit uh, data interface to the LCD and I managed to do that and I was getting data back into the Arduino and it was changing data whenever I was pressing a button on the panel there and it was changing something on the display I was seeing that in my code, I was seeing a change there the, the, the update to the LCD doesn't happen all the time, it's not scanned continuously it's the, the data that will be sent on a change so that was actually quite good, it allowed me to see when something had changed directly uh, via the variables in the code. However, the data that I was getting back didn't match the data that I was seeing on the LCD. Not any of the control codes and not any of the actual uh, text data on the front there. And uh, for the moment, I've kind of given up on that. I don't really know why. I've verified over and over again. I've got the data, the data in the right order, D0 to D7, everything's perfect. Um, so I'm not really too sure. There is a possibility the LCD is running in 4-bit mode, but I was actually seeing all 8 lines changing. So uh, I maybe need to have another go at it again and strip out all the GSM module code and get it down to the bare bones and, and do it again. Because it would be nice to be able to relay some of the, the, the information on the LCD via the GSM module back to my phone. But in saying that, that's going to take up memory uh, on the Arduino. And, you know, I'm already at the limit where uh, the IDE, when at compile time, it's thrown up some uh, uh, warnings that memory's getting a bit low. So certainly if I start implementing, uh, you know, a lot more variables for the interaction with the LCD, it's going to probably push me over the limit there. So again, I'd be looking to get the GSM module uh, memory footprint a, a lot lower. So the hardware's still there, it's all still wired up to the LCD, I'm just not using it. At the end of the day, uh, really, what I want to be able to do is turn the alarm off and on remotely and get the basics of status messages from the panel, i.e. is the alarm off or is the alarm sounding? And I've already done that, I've picked that information up. So anything else is just a bonus there. But uh, it's all great fun anyway. So whether I do a part three, I'm not really sure. We'll see how we get on. If I don't manage to do anything with the LCD, um, I think that'll wrap up this project here. Um, like I said, I'll be spinning another board uh, for the, the, the production version and getting that in, installed in the house. I've still got a little bit of tidying up to do in the code, a few more um, status messages to add in that it can text me, but for the moment, uh, there we go. So, thanks for watching.